Hey there, Daniel Hartman, Community Machine Recycle, New Brunswick, with another shop improvement update. Today, back at the table saw again, took the back part of the fence. It was 7 16 from the top surface of the table here. Moved it down so it's three quarters of an inch, which makes it easy for either setting a piece of plywood on here for an outfeed table or to use some three quarter inch. I would use square corner aluminum tubing with a one eighth wall. Square tubing with a square corner. Anyhow, I guess you can get radius for a square corner that extrudes stuff. And basically the idea is also drill a bunch of holes just over a quarter of an inch to be able to screw stuff up from the bottom or to be able to use quarter 20 fasteners if you do the aluminum to just thread the tubing and run a bolt or countersunk, but more likely just thread. So also make sure where the holes are, they're not in the way of the, I'm trying to think what's the, it's not a dovetail, it's a slot cross cut guide, cross cut guide in the table. So that's saw rock solid done. And other little project, got a sheet of, I think it's Lexan, it just had clear plastic coating. It was stuff that was left over lying around here and pull that in to cut a piece for the roof of the forklift. Because sometimes when it's just the light rain, it's enough to keep the seat dry and you know, not gonna get your hair wet. So that's another little improvement. Here's a nice little find here, a couple of 2,500 kilogram chain trolleys. Now, this one here is complete. It's got a chain hand, hand wheel. So if you got something really heavy, because I plan to use these on a jib crane. So if you have something really heavy, you don't have to push and have it swing. You can just use a hand chain, same as a garage door, like a large garage door or a chain fall would have a hand chain like this. So it's kind of cool because two of the wheels or the wheels are geared on one side and are driven by this shaft here. The other one, obviously, well, you can see that it's broken. So who knows how they'll get used if they get used in the same spot. But anyhow, I'd seen them a while back lying around at a place I visited and said, hey, what are you doing with those? And the price is right. So hopefully <laughs> they get used sooner than later. I was thinking about putting a couple of little monorails, depending on how things go. Next thing, got this hose reel. Still have to run a piece. I'm just going to use some hydraulic hose, I believe, to go from the half inch a steel pipe airline to the fitting up on side there but I didn't even realize I thought this is just a 25 foot hose reel but it turned out it was a 50 foot so installing it realized it could go over here I was originally thinking about putting it down here more because usually where that would get used is either bench work really close which if that's the case it's easy enough just to have a short line right there but the other thing is changing tires on the car or usually if I'm heading out on a road trip bring the car or shop truck when there was one bring it inside check the tires you know maybe blow some stuff off with compressed air so it's just handy for being able to work around things or if there's a project that needs to be disassembled or assembled to have compressed air right there so that's a huge win having that done Got a whole bunch of other little odds and ends projects that I can't think of off the top of my head. One that I tried to record the other day, it didn't turn out very well. Major improvement out here is it broke in the front door handles on the car. And that was a major inconvenience. So check the door handles off the rear doors. I don't even know if you can see this here. No more door handle. So 
took those off, put them on the front. Both front door handles are broken within a week of one another. So that was a really great way to fix that up. And to be a good, whoa, Bluetooth. Got that set up for listening to music in the shop. You can play music on the phone, hooks up to the stereo. And if anyone calls, cuts out the music, which is a nice feature. And it makes it a lot easier to hear than the phone, phone ringer. Anyhow, hopefully it's not trying to Bluetooth while I'm recording this video. Oh no. Yep, it's the microphone on the phone that's working. Nice. Well, you'll get to see this video. I'm trying to think. It's got to be one other little thing. Still working on the fume extractor. There's the motor for it right there. Finally found a support line for Leroy Summer Motors, formerly made in Canada, now part of, is it NIDAC? They bought, I think, everything like Baldor and a whole bunch of brands all consolidated. So hopefully I find out about the capacitor and a wiring schematic on that because I tried to go from 110 to 220. It never worked on 220. Tried to switch it back to 110. So maybe the wiring wasn't right on 220 because I just went on the advice of a motor shop how to wire it for 220. So maybe that damaged the capacitor. I have no idea. I know I tried it on 110 before installing the thing in the first place, which is always important. You get electrical stuff, try it out right away. Then you know whether you're actually going to be likely to use it or not. All right, on that note, thanks again for joining me for another shop improvement. Please like, please subscribe, please comment below on things you're working on for your shop improvement. And you can hit the bell button for notifications for new videos, which might be coming out sooner than later. <laughs> Till next time, take care.